Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This store is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Get signed up for their email distribution list to find out when the store will be opening, what their hours will be, and most importantly, what they will have in inventory at abvbarrelshop.com. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk about Jack Daniels and are they pursuing bourbon fans? My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Kaylee Baker, Jim Fosnott, and Tim Swyatt. Hey gang, what's up? How are we doing? Hey. Doing good. Very good. So we've got a fun show today. We're going to be talking about Jack Daniels and are they pursuing bourbon fans at this point? You know, they were always so, hey, we're not bourbon, we're our own thing. And then they just kind of cultivated their own audience. And that's who they appealed to. Now it seems like they still want to do that, but they also want to kind of reach over the fence a little bit and grab some bourbon fans and, and, and bring them in on the, the fun too. But we'll talk about that after the break. For right now, Kaylee said there's something she want to talk about. What is that? Yeah, so um, I it's actually kind of backpacking off of our last small talk unintentionally. But um, I was thinking about what is your favorite bourbon barrel aged product that is not like you know it's not bourbon it's like a, a food like my favorite um which i'm probably going to have some later tonight is to put cream cheese and then evan williams red pepper jelly on top of that and serve it with wheat thins oh my god That's so anything stuff, huh? like bourbon barrel aged food products what's your favorite that you've tried okay all right what do you guys think what's your favorite bourbon barrel aged food product for me, it's the syrup. Maple syrup. Yep. Maple it just, syrup, it works yeah. perfect together, and you can use it on so many things, whether it is pancakes or waffles or over ice cream. I'll put uh, it into my barrel-aged Manhattans. Um, it's, yeah, that to me is, is far and away the best, and there's several great ones out there. The first one, I got gifted a, uh, a whistle pig one when I was doing a pick with them, and uh, I've got several other ones since then. But to me, maple syrup and whiskey works well. Okay. Okay. I, I'll throw out there the uh, bourbon barrel aged um, soy sauce from uh, Bourbon Barrel Foods. Man, mm. you know, uh, if you want to try something a little bit different, man, it's good stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that teriyaki Tim. sauce too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Kentuckyaki. 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 Yeah. Kentucky-aki. Kentucky-aki. yeah. Kentucky-aki. yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah, that's good stuff too. Yeah, Tim. Anything else? I, I know you were also going to say what uh, Jim said there, but anything else? Yeah, I was going to. Yeah, maple syrup we took one, but I, I do like what's going on with uh, with the coffee roasting too as well. Oh, yeah. You've got you know oh, Fonte's yeah. coffee and Yellowstone uh, barrels. You've got you know what uh, John Waddell and Corey uh, uh, Corey Welsh are doing with uh, you know Stave and Bean coffee with the different ride barrels and Peerless barrels and this that and the other. That stuff does come through very very well. Uh, it does. And I, <laughs> You know, I, I hate running out of those beans after I'm done with them. So I try to keep those only on the weekends because uh, mm-hmm. they're just to keep something special and keep it going. But that, that the, the barrel aged coffee, uh, beans and stuff like that, that's top notch stuff across 100%. the board. Yeah, that is good stuff for sure. For sure. Becca, what do you think? Any any bourbon barrel aged foods you're into? Vanilla. Ooh. Vanilla. Yeah. Oh, yes. Vanilla is really good. Yes. Yeah. Vanilla and I like honey as well. Yeah. Bourbon barrel aged honey is fantastic. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I tried to talk Royce into doing some vanilla one time. Uh, and he wasn't into that. I, I don't know why. I, I think you can make a lot of money off that. I think uh, if you do, if you use the right beans and you age it the, the right amount of time, uh, something a little bit different than anybody else is doing, 
Uh, you know, right now he made fun of me about that and, and turned that deal down. Right now, if we were just that was probably two years ago. If we were just cracking that barrel right now, we'd be really rich men. I wouldn't even be new to do this podcast right now. We'd be vanilla uh, barons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that son of a vanilla bitch turned me off. Is like it's not worth it. And, and I feel like. <clears throat> yeah, we should have done it. Now it's the two years later. It'd be out there. That's well, feel like there's, you can sell from just that barrel alone. I know. Yeah. I'm mad about it again. Now. now I'm mad all over mad about it again. I there's got no, a missed opportunity no there to reuse the barrel to make whiskey or to age whiskey in it too. Like, uh, yes. you know, put some you. bourbon in there and pick up that vanilla flavor. Uh, or a uh, double we barrel. Do we don't want to do that. <laughs> Oh, we hate making no. money. It'll be like two years. It's so long. It'll be like two years. And here we are two years <laughs> later. It could be rolling in vanilla money right now. But no, no. no we don't I, want to do that. I, I think I agree with you here, Steve. I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, I had the beans. I was I was recent. I, I, you know, I forget all this stuff because like, I'm old. I forget. Man, I was in tune with it for, for a hot minute there. I, I knew exactly what we needed to get and how much. And I, I upscaled the recipe, had it all down, ready to go. Nah, hey, I, I could that use that recipe is that to make the vanilla beans. Yeah, I'll have to. It was to make the vanilla beans. I mean, not, not make vanilla beans, Pick make them. vanilla, utilizing the best vanilla beans and all that. I, I done all the work. I, I found the places to get it. Research, and here's the links, Royce. This is what we're going to do. Oh, and I, it's going to be shit all over you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I could be a vanilla bean, uh, uh, you know, barrel aged. The middle beam, whatever. <laughs> I can't even think right now. I'm so frustrated because I could be rich. And instead, I'm here. I am just working away, podcasting six nights a week. Yeah. Take a picture of each bean and make it into an NFT. Oh yeah, that would have been a whole thing. I I tried to tell the kid. I'm, I'm like, please, let's do this. Doesn't always listen. Please. Yeah, I'm like, I I you know I did the thing where I wrote down a number, flipped it on the desk, and pushed it towards him, and I'm like, this is what we'll make, and he. Yeah, I didn't say no. This is I didn't realize much. that this was going to bring up so much anger in Steve. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think that you talking either. about vanilla was going to just like. I was just uh, going to have a good snack later. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you, working in the shop with Steve, I realized how much pent up old man anger he has. <laughs> oh, yeah. Filled with old man anger. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything can set me off. So, yeah, you just never you know. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just speaking of something that got me angry. So, I had to go into Costco. And oh. uh, let me tell you something. I've ripped on Costco for years. It's a hundred times worse than I thought. It's, it's worse than I could have ever imagined. So I had to go. I was helping my brother-in-law with the shop. It was kind of cool. I got to hang out with my brother-in-law. Uh, you know, we never spent that amount of time together, but I was working and I liked being at the shop because I felt like I'm going to be able to shop. I wanted to see the interaction with customers experience. I want to, you know, stock the shelves and all that. But he, he gets his wholesale from places like Costco and Sam's and Freddy's, which is another place up there. It's local. And uh, so we'd have to go to all these places and shop and get that stuff. And, and we go, he takes me into Costco on a Saturday unbelievable there's all these kiosks set up where you walk around they're like do you want a credit card do you want do you want to try this do you want that can i can i get you a fruits roll up sir I, no i don't want any of that I, i'm just with my brother i want to get the hell out of here is what i want to get what do you mean you don't want snacks what you don't want yeah. samples yeah. that's the best part I of need, Costco. I eight credit cards i i, I ate eight fruit roll-ups and i had <laughs> eight credit cards i tried soup while i was in there no i don't want to be that I, uh, no heck no yeah that's uh, why so you got to go on friday nights in anger Friday nights at Costco's date night. It's spectacular. They're like, it's the cheapest thing. Dollar fifty hot seen, dog and a soft drink. You're out there. You die. Have you seen the movie? You got to watch the movie, sir. You, before you come in, you got to watch the movie. Yeah, I know what they're doing. Movie? Brainwashing. It's a brainwashing movie. And it plays that one song. It's like, ha, 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 Thank God you're not actually good at that because we'd get copyright infringement if you were good. Song you were doing, but uh, don't worry. So no one knows what fucking song that was, Steve. <laughs> and Tom Cruise comes out and tries to get you to the Scientology tent. So you're all good. Yeah. Uh, Carmen Miranda or something like that. That's the name of the song. Car Carmen Carmen Miranda or something like yeah, that. Yeah, was that's, from that's Indiana it. Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah, that's in there. Of course, of course. All right. On and that before note, they ripped their heart out. Yes, and then they ate it. Uh, that was at uh, yes. hunting camp. It it moose heart, actually. They, it was actually not human heart. They ate that was moose heart. Too. That's a little known yes. fact. All right, it is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? We're starting with Miss Becca Sue. Miss Becca Sue. Um, I'm gonna do some uh, some JTS Brown. Okay. Okay. It's a 
That's Imagine cool. this gift I gave Miss Becca Sue. She'll be, I'll be long dead, but she'll be 65 years old podcasting and people will be calling her Miss Becca Sue still 70. My <laughs> husband even later. calls me that. So I know <laughs> so it's, it's stuck. It's, uh, it's not going to, it's like McNew. Hey, I she gave married. myself this name. Yeah, yeah, true. But I made it where it locked it in. You couldn't, but you could, I gave now. myself this name. This you is my name just, on well, everything. You, but you could be just Rebecca Neely now, change it. And uh, no, you're locked in. That's how people know you. They're Miss Becca Sue. Yeah. yeah, it's weird for me when I go to events that are ABV events, events and I have to introduce myself. So when I go, hey, I'm Rebecca, I, I'm Miss Becca. Sue. <laughs> right. Do you listen yeah. to the shows? And there's, <laughs> there's some people that are they're like old timers, people my age, I want to say. But uh, they're old timers. I'm not. And, but I remember when you got married, they're like, well, I guess it'll be Mrs. Becca Sue now. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> all your name is Miss Becca Sue. We've got a lot invested in that. It's not, it's not Miss Mrs. Becca Sue. What the hell? That sounds like you're you're a teacher or something. I don't know yeah, what that is. I'm Mrs. not Becca changing it. No, it is. No, this is my stage Becca. name at this exactly. point. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm not going to change it. People, people, uh, some reason don't get it when you're podcasting. When it's a movie that doesn't ever think twice about it. Oh, Julia Roberts is great. They're not like, oh, it's, it's, shouldn't she be Mrs. Julia, whatever? I don't know. No, they don't do that to them. No. All right. Kaylee, what do you got? Uh, I've got Let's some. Um, everything's Jack getting me going on this show. <laughs> everything's getting me rolling. What are you, all right, excited to talk about more things that'll piss off Steve. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got some Jack Daniels single barrel select. Let's see. No. What is happening? What is <laughs> happening? Kelly? The flatulence tonight. The flatulence. Is there really more flatulence than what? Yeah. Did that that it, there was a reverb on that that sounded yeah. like a, like cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> I heard your cheeks flapping. Yes. Your, your cheeks were giving you a little applause yeah. as that fart came <laughs> out. Yes. That's what I heard. Okay. I'm just going to say. Yeah. There was I like no how bar she does stool. The bottle, yeah, she does the cork pop and then tries to do the one cheek sneak, hoping we don't hear. Like, hey, there is no yeah. bar stool harmed in the making of this podcast. Okay. I just want everybody to know that. Okay. I <laughs> went to uh, Jack Daniels too, since that's the theme of the show. I've got the single barrel, like uh, Kaylee there, but I've got the barrel proof version. Mm. Oh, here we go. Mm. Up, up. Okay. Okay. Kaylee's uh, toot was much better. I didn't barely hear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's say Kaylee's got the lead. Yeah, assisted with flatulence, but uh, yes, go ahead. The toot assist. Do you like the name uh, instead of fart? Is flatulence? I don't. It sounds flatulence. funny. To me. I don't know why. Flatulence is flatulence. a it's a hilarious word. Yes, it is a hilarious word. It's a hilarious toot, word. Fart are are toot. like childish. Toot. What about the vapors? Toot. Huh? What about the vapors? Oh, the about having the vapors. That's what it was. It was gas, like the vapors. The they call it back in the 1800s. Back in the 20s. In the roaring 20s. The... Never heard that. Ah, oh, yeah, see? I've got the vapor. See? Yeah, see? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, see? Yeah, yeah, see? Smell this. <laughs> Pull my finger. Pull my finger. No, oh, yeah, yeah, I got the vapors. Yeah, yeah. All right, Tim, go ahead. I'm going with some, uh, what do we got? We've got Whiskey Acres, Blue Popcorn. Mike Muffled. Did it open? Yeah. Tim, <laughs> go ahead. Tim, go ahead. Tim, <laughs> proceed. And then he <laughs> Tim, I don't know what happens with you. I really don't. No. I, 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 don't even, I shouldn't even try anymore. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, I know you know it's different when you're sitting in the room. You can hear the actual cork pop, but we're hearing it via microphone, and there's nothing there. I hope when you listen to these shows, you're like, yeah, they weren't messing with me. There's nothing there. No, no. The joke keeps rolling on. Uh, I have yet to purchase this new microphone, and that's going to be my small talk for one of these times here too as well. You'll find out what about that what, what that one goes. Yeah, my microphone sucks. Okay. But do you have any plans? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any plans though? Cheers, Jay. <laughs> Am I not going to? Do I not get to pop a cork, Steve? I was waiting for. I was waiting for you, Jim. Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a losing effort, but go ahead. You're, you don't get the new bottles. Heidi gets those. You get the used ones. So go ahead. <laughs> you need Kelly, to Kelly, I'm sorry, but you've lost. I only do buy over there. I have an old elk uh, single barrel that I wanted to open. Everything else is <laughs> proper. Fine, yeah, I wouldn't want my flatulence to win anyways. <laughs> I was going to go with another one until Steve screwed you over and just passed me right up. So. Oh. <laughs> You I'm know, right, right now, I don't. If Heidi's home right now, her eyes just popped open, and she's like, "What? What did he just open?" That's all I had for the night. Jim, she's, she's on her way up the stairs to get her sample. 
Here's Jim. Here's Jim. All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're talking about Jack Daniels and are they trying to recruit us? Are they going after us, the bourbon fans? We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott in the greater St. Louis area. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only focuses on single barrels. We aren't open just yet, but our plan is to have the most diverse single barrel offerings from our many friends in the world of bourbon. By signing up for a weekly email, you will know our entire inventory we have on hand. In addition to single barrels, we'll have a tasting bar and a gift shop featuring logo merchandise for both the shop and the ABV network, as well as a full curriculum of bourbon education classes. Additionally, we'll use the gift shop to feature products from our partners in the world of bourbon, companies like Art Eatable Chocolates and Old Man Bay Signs. Head over to ABV Barrel Shop to sign up for our email and text distribution list so you can stay in the know. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is Jim Fosnott. I'm your bourbon buddy and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about Jack Daniels and are they after us? Yeah, I think they're coming after us. <laughs> so for years, the way Jack Daniels uh, went about their marketing and their public persona was to be like, you know, we're not bourbon. Uh, that's not us. That's them. And by the way, if you're a fan of us, you're only a fan of us. And it worked for them. You, you, even if you don't like Jack Daniels, even if you're listening to this and saying, I hate Jack Daniels or I'm only a bourbon person, you got to say hats off. They've turned it into the biggest whiskey company in the world. And they built a loyal following where it's like, if you either like us or you like them. And, and you know what? Probably overall, there's more bourbon fans. But, you know, indiv individually, the biggest company in the world when we're talking whiskey is Jack Daniels. And they, they've done that by by getting very loyal fans and and you know what and they turn those fans into be like oh well, i like jack daniels i guess i don't like bourbon uh because they you know they they've they've been very much you know it's it's us for them what do you like and uh so so if you're a jack daniels fan you probably only drink jack daniels and that's not necessarily the case with bourbon i mean you just jump around you go to whatever you know you want to try different things but uh jd's done a great job but now it seems like they've made a concerted effort to be like Boy, this bourbon party is going pretty well. We went in on this, even admitting that they are in fact bourbon. They choose to be uh, call themselves a Tennessee whiskey. Before it was, it's a separate thing. No, we're not that. But you can hear their master distillers. You can hear the company personnel saying that on podcasts and stuff like that. And that's a total. That's a that's a one eighty. That's completely opposite of what they've ever done. And it's just interesting that they're doing it. I think all that's going after bourbon, don't you guys? I mean, that's that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. even the subject of this podcast and tonight's other podcast that is also about Jack Daniels is showing that, you know, it's gained attention in the bourbon community already. Just the fact that they're right. doing all these new things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, they, they've got a couple items out and uh, they're new items that just came out. They've got a bonded Jack Daniels mm -hmm. and a triple mash. These are things that we talk about on the bourbon side. You know, Royce's yeah. products are triple mash, uh, bottled and bond. You know, other whiskeys can be like, like uh, mellow corn, for instance, is bonded, but it's rare to have a, a bonded whiskey like, a, you know, that's, that's not, you know, bourbon. That's really more a bourbon thing than, than anything. 
And, and you think about where that comes from, it's, it comes from our, our friend, Colonel E. H. Taylor, you know, working on the Bottled and Bond Act. It's really, a, again, the, you can have, you can even have spirits that aren't whiskey that, that do this, but for the most part, and Jack Daniel's never done this, but now they've got a bonded one out. So crazy. I think they're doing a brilliant job with what they're doing. And it's not, yeah. it's not my drink of choice, but like we had a podcast a couple of weeks ago talking about what, like, what could big bourbon do better? I can't remember the exact thing was, but, but Jack Daniels has, has read the tea leaves and they see how much the market is expanding and they're going after that sticky customer. They're going after the new younger, you know, millennial, you know, whiskey drinker and trying to get them early. So they have them for life. And it's smart because, you know, there are 2 million cases ahead of the next, you know, per year ahead of the next biggest distillery. They're selling over 12 million cases a year. And they want to keep to be that, that big dog. And you have so many new brands coming out with all the craft distilleries that they're trying to, to get that customer first. And, you know, Hats off to them to having the the business acumen to go after it. It's you know well, it's not what I prefer. Um, right. I get what they're doing, and they're totally chasing the bourbon customer. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I got to give them credit too because I am definitely not an old number seven fan. I, I don't like that whiskey. And you know, if you want to talk base products, I'll take Beam all every day, all day, the white label versus the Jim Beam black label. But uh, I got to say, some of those uh, Jack Daniels, those barrel proofs and barrel selects and Coy Hill and all those cool things that's doing. Exactly. I haven't tried these new ones yet. I want to try them. I want to try the bond and yeah. I want to try this yeah. uh, triple mash and see what's going on there. So, yeah, they're, they're seems good. like they're picking up, you know, a little bit of what's going on in the craft world and trying to kind of aim towards those people that are looking for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What proof that Jack just Daniels- hit a kid. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Becca. What, what proof is Jack Daniels normally? Like 80? Regular- like regular, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah the, the Jack Daniels Black, yeah, 80. So they're like everybody else on their well, basic Jack. I have, uh, here. I, uh, gentlemen, what is that, 90? Uh, Jack? 80 proof, yeah. 80. Oh, it's only 80. So, well, yeah, I, I don't even know what the difference between the two but is. I think that's why they're marketing to, to that younger customer. It's an you know, if you're just getting into whiskey, you're gonna want that lower proof. proof. Yeah, it's yeah. an easy drinking, smooth, like Jack Daniels to me is, is kind of like a like where Irish whiskey falls in, in general, not all Irish whiskeys, but like Jameson, they're soft and easy drinking. They're, they're a great place to start for young people. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get these new whiskey drinkers to become brand loyal and, you know, good for them. And they're, and yeah. it's a good mixer too, you know, and a lot of, a lot of kids that age are not going to jump straight to drinking <laughs> straight whiskey or, you know, whiskey neat. They're going to go for the cocktails first. And it's, yeah. you know, Jack and Coke is the big thing when you're getting right. into drinking. But, and, you know, and the, another thing, nobody does better, Jack, than the marketing and the branding. Oh, yeah. I mean, all the shirts, the clothes and all that kind of stuff. I, I would wonder, I would like to see what they make off that stuff. And a lot of it's licensing and stuff like that. But I'd like to see what they make off of that. And and where does it, if that was considered a separate distillery, where would that fall as we looked at the rankings? of distillery? I bet it would be bigger than most of the craft. Uh, bourbon you know uh, they they make millions off of that stuff yeah. uh you know just uh, you know the amazing. craziest part is it's not even at their distillery it's around the corner in the <laughs> well like you can order online obviously but right. yeah. at the distillery there's no merch it's only bottles you have to right. go you know down the street to the little community. square uh yep. to, yep. to even go to a store to get a jack daniels t-shirt really yeah yeah i don't know if so that so it's honestly pretty cool because they're supporting the local community that way no, not all them. Are they are they coming after the bourbon drinker or are they coming after that new drinker that is afraid of age statements? Any of the new any of the new drinkers coming in are afraid of age statements. That's why no age statement bottles are. It, it, it's been a gift to the marketing teams because now Jack's saying, okay, we've got enough product laid down. We're selling enough old number seven. Let's just throw this triple match out here. Let's see. Well, there's bonded option. Let's just have our bonded whiskey. I do think there's a renaissance just overall of Tennessee whiskey. Finally, you got how many craft distillers that are popping up all over the place? Nashville is the bachelorette party town USA, oh, yeah. and you've got all these young folks coming into Tennessee, and they're seeing Tennessee whiskey. And I had no idea that this stuff was down there. All I knew was was Jack Daniels. Yeah, you, know, right. you, you look left and right in Nashville, and there's Jack Daniels everywhere. Yeah, you know, your bar has a neon sign, and, you know, flag, whatever. You know, they don't have to put an H statement on anything. They're they're at eighty proof. They can do what they want, and they're just saying, "Fine, you know, if we're tracking our sales are, are trending down a little bit, we've got enough stock. Let's just throw this away. Let's throw this away." And then you got the Tennessee tasters, all these different things to draw people to them. Yeah, and all these little things. It's the marketing spin. I guess I'd say it's the marketing spin from their parent company, just replicating what another brand is doing, just doing it with Jack Daniels now and having fun with it. And by by 
by trade, it's attracting the bourbon drinker now because we all want something new and fresh. And now you're seeing an old brand and it's different. Yeah. Well, interesting. So they just got the marketing power and the, and the scale to be able to do whatever the hell they want. They don't have to, but they're doing it. But yeah. Tim, you brought the, the, the bachelorette party capital of kind of the United States there. And it's perfect because the largest uh, growth category in the whiskey industry is women. And so yes. they're, they're catching them in their twenties while they're getting married, you know, twenties, early thirties, where they're getting married, and they're trying to get them under their fold. And and uh, you know, in my old career, it's, you know, sticky customer. Let's get them for life. And so, oh, because it brings back memories. Oh, I remember doing this at this at this bachelorette party. We all did this shots, and that's a good point. Yeah, Kelly yeah, brought up Jack and Coke. Like, yeah. I, I would love to see a statistic of, of bars of how many people order a Jack and Coke versus a. Whiskey and Coke, yeah. Like it's even even at uh, and I speak from experience here, obviously, because even at my distillery, people will come up and be like, "Can I have a Jack and Coke?" And I'm like, "You're at a fucking distillery. I'm not gonna have Jack. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you you can have our craft whiskey. <laughs> you cannot like, have Jack. Okay, Xerox. It's become synonymous with you know with what they're ordering. They just mean whiskey and Coke, but Jack and Coke has become that term." Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's true. That's true. So there you go. Just a little discussion. I'm not trying to change anybody's opinion or you should like it. We should. It's just it's out there and it's something interesting to watch if you're into bourbon and you want to see what's going on. Uh, just watch a little bit of Jack Daniels because they are doing some interesting things for sure. And they've figured out a way to stay relevant for a long, long time. And it looks like they're trying to figure out ways to maintain that status as the big dog. So interesting to watch. We'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Kaylee, we'll start with you. Where can people People find you you can come see me at leatherwood distillery at one of our two locations or you may follow me on instagram at kaleo baker or the bourbon bakers all right tim how about you, you can find me on the bourbon and whiskey tasting events page at abvnetwork.com or on instagram at swyguy2112 all right jim you can find me on facebook at jim fosnott on instagram at foz jim f-a-z-z-j-i-m or you can find me uh, working at the ADD Barrel Shop to try and get that thing open as soon as possible with Steve Aikwood. Heck yeah. Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, 1K, no Cs. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, oh, is abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. We put all of our previous shows. we got about 3,000 for your listening pleasure. We put our blogs out there, ABV uh, newsletters, and we do three of those uh, uh, a week. Most weeks, uh, Bourbon Zeppelin comes out twice a month. The other ones are weekly. So check us out at abvnetwork.com. Ms. Becca, Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Cheers. Bye. See you later. See ya. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, 
We do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's upcoming Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.